Does a hell of a setup though. Oh, it's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Like yeah. when I was first starting it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be the technical difficulties that put me off actually starting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's literally just phone and yeah, a mic. Phone mic. Just a Beautiful system that those. records it all, which is... Yeah, shit, yeah, that's bloody good. Nice. That's bloody good. No, but I appreciate you coming on, having oh, a no, chat. Shit, no, no, it was bloody... Thanks, sir. Yeah. Yeah, obviously Kalan. <laughs> yeah, Kalan was like, yeah, got to get Dave on. Oh, that was bloody kind of him. It's, uh, yeah, no, he's a good lad. No. Good lad, and, and I'm sure you've seen how the cricketer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I hadn't really noticed him until he scored the 80 odd against us the other week. Like, yeah. That might have actually been the first time I played him, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just yeah. hits the ball so clean at he's the got top. A, yeah, yeah, he's got a solid technique, um, and he's got snap power. And we get those two things together, and, and yeah, I, I, I watch his um, lofted on drive for six, and you're like, that's a hell of a shot. <laughs> she's like, I wish I could do that. Unreal, eh? And like, yeah, and it's just like nice cricket shots, but just struck so clean. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah he, he played a couple of those against us in that innings, just like, fuck. Like, it's like, I, I love and hate it at the same time. It's like, it's so good watching guys yeah, like yeah. that bat, but at the same time, like, fuck, we need to get him out. Yeah, at the same time, I wouldn't mind them doing it against someone else. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. what I usually think. I mean, yeah. You know, why? Yeah, yes, it's nice, but I'd rather watch it. Yeah. Um, not against us. So. Yeah. Yeah, and nice. yeah it's, it's always mixed feelings. They eh? like, like Be Bevan Johns always scored runs against us. Yep. Just like, oh, it's just yeah, hits yeah. the ball so hard. Yeah, I, I think he's probably the hardest hitting batsman I've seen. Yeah, I, I, you stand at mid off and thinking, yeah, yeah, oh, I don't want to be here. It's gonna, if it's gonna come, it's gonna come hard. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, like there's like three notable guys I've played against who like significantly hit the ball hard. It was yeah. like him, Josh Clarkson, and yeah. Shannon Stewart. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. Like, I don't want to be fielding that cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. Under yeah. the pump. Yeah. When did you play against Josh? Uh, when I used to play for Marlborough. Oh, yeah. So he, I think he played a bit of club cricket yeah. in Blenheim and yeah. then moved to Nelson. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he actually scored his first 100 against us. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's something to... Yeah. Um, but something yeah. to say you could watch. Watch them all. <laughs> and Shannon Stewart scored way too many runs against us in Hawke Club cricket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Did he? Was it, who was it that he got the three hundred against? Not us. Mm. Not us. Maybe, maybe. Oh, it might be Nelson or Buller. Yeah, yeah. I think we. I played him three times. I think he scored one seventy, one forty, and ninety or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Handy player. Yeah, he's actually yes. coming on on um, Monday. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it'll be good to chat to him. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, when I mean, you have, yeah, players play for Black Caps and. Um, well, how many years for Canterbury? Must have been fifteen. Yeah, a lot. Near on. It's yeah, it's impressive. That is bloody impressive. Yeah, just I was I, I always just think about like Jimmy. I was looking at Jimmy Anderson's record last night and yeah. it's like he's been playing for like the last twenty two years. That's more than half his life. He's yeah. been an international cricketer. Yeah, yeah. And you think of when now there's twenty one year olds coming through yeah. international cricket and he's he started playing before they were born yeah, it's wild uh, it is unbelievable isn't it yeah yeah and, so, and just keeps getting better yeah yeah i hope he, i just hope he keeps going same like, i want to see him i want to see him play him at 50. <laughs> yeah yeah and i like the fact that he he winds a few people up and you know the aussies don't like him and yeah um yeah and, and they say that he needs the green seamers which just isn't it just doesn't seem to be real no. I, he's awesome over in india yeah yeah great um, returns there yeah so Oh, oh yeah, I like the fact that he's he's a niggly character. Obviously, yeah. You, you, like you don't you don't hear many stories, but you certainly hear people that um, yeah they bring up that Anderson is a frosty <laughs> character, and you know like, oh, I'm looking forward to him retiring because then maybe people might start saying a few more stories about yeah. what happens behind closed doors. Yeah, that would be interesting. Stuff. Uh, yeah, um, there'll be a few books that will be worth a read when they come out. Fuck yeah, Warners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that can't be far away. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a great read. That is going to be a great read. Yeah, that will be. <laughs> um, and and Jimmy Anderson, he just he always goes on. He's just like I just feel feel like I can keep up with the boys. Yeah. So he, he might just keep going. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. When do they start? When do they start? Tomorrow night. Yeah, they they've, they've had a big big gap between the fourth and fiftieth. Yeah. yeah. That's um. um uh, that would be a bit of me. It's a nice hour that they usually start at 5pm so yeah, you can get a few shit sessions in before we're going to bed. And... Yeah. I don't know. How, how do you feel about like England's selection? I think I reckon their spinners 
are a bit rogue. The, yeah. the selections there. I'd be pretty dark if I saw the other, the other boys playing first class cricket and Yeah. Yeah. I like they've had yeah. I've had some good returns over they there. They have, yeah. But outside yeah. of India, are they Yeah, I, England's a funny one. Like I I enjoy the way they play it, but then some of them what's like Duckett's comment in the media and you're like uh, what did he say about how um, when other people are scoring runs, they feel like they should have some credit. So, uh, <laughs> you know, other players can be good players also, and, and it doesn't, they're not necessarily playing England's way because, um, you know, they just, that's how they play anyway. So, yeah. yeah, but I like the way England play, but then just some of the comments are, are very almost like the old Australian. Yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> bit arrogant, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny how it's kind of, you know, changed, and, and now the Aussies are, a real you know, gentle and um, surprising yeah, yeah come across like nice bloke <laughs> yeah. yeah hang on <laughs> what's going on yeah I want to not like you you've you <laughs> been you know polite in the media and then playing hard it doesn't really fit right but uh-huh. yeah yeah have you watched did you watch much of the test in Wellington yeah yeah I did I, I as soon as we let them bat that whole first session and put on one twin <clears> I was like I, I just felt in that moment that was yeah. the game eh? yeah like what was it would have been all out for about two sixty versus three eighty odd. Yeah. 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 I I heard um well, I ended up just kind of at the back end of getting COVID last week, so perfect time. <laughs> Park up, watch the cricket. Um and yeah. Just Oh, you just want us to win. <laughs> so badly. You just I know. want us to watch us beat Aussie. I know. Um but I mean they're just they're awesome. Yeah. Oh, they, they are absolutely awesome. Yeah. So good. Like right through that order and, and the bowling attack. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm always so hopeful, like even though we're chasing like 400 from like, we, we could do yeah, that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. always like, we could do this. Yeah. Even though it fucking never happens. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. But no, I mean, hopefully the, oh, it's going to be another awesome couple of days in Crosh. And... Yeah. Are you going to any other test? Uh, hope, go Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Yes. That'd be nice. Oh, it's going to be, it's been an awesome summer for watching how packed you know the crowds have been packed in pretty much all the games um uh, you know just it seems like a little bit more atmosphere like there's not the the silence you know going no. around the crowd as they all politely wait for the first ball to be bowled it, it seems like a little bit of atmosphere and yeah yeah it's awesome well I, was, I can't remember i was saying it too um i'm surprised like new zealand don't have their like alternative like barmy army like yeah, yeah. It, it feels like that would suit our culture like yeah. perfectly yeah yeah um, Get it, yeah they used to do the old beige be uh, beige be radar. Yeah, uh, but yeah. but not quite to the same level as. No, no. Nah. Yeah, because uh, I mean, just being part of the party army would be so awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they do it. They just do it well, don't they? Yeah, it's so good. Two is away. Chance are brilliant. Um, the, the old or the old trumpet gun and it's it's yeah, it's a fantastic setup. It must be awesome to play, knowing that you're going to have a fan base. Yeah. And we're just going to go for five days. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. So, no, the English are pretty lucky. Mm. How do you feel about um, Wags not playing? Yeah, I would have liked to see him in Crosshitch, but yeah, I mean, I think I would have liked to see him just because he deserves a he could have sent off. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, oh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, you, know, you watch the passion and um. And it's it's nice to see, it's, it's nice to see when he cares so much that yeah, it's like uh, it matters. Yeah, it yeah. means a lot to him. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. just see like his yeah. retirement speech and him battling to get through it, yeah. through it, and she's yeah. like, "Fuck, how do we not give him a send off game?" Like, yeah, yeah, no, he's he's been fantastic. So uh, it's sad not to see him kind of get the send off that he deserves, but at the same time, it's yeah, it's a ruthless. Yeah, yeah. Pretty ruthless, so. so they've basically said he's not playing right, so I'm assuming Ben Sears is going to play. Yeah, oh, yeah. unless they decide to play a spinner. Mm. Be. Yeah. Be interesting. Will be. Will I mean, be. you watch um, you, know, you watch someone like Nathan Lyon, and he always makes every wicket look like you should be playing a spinner. Yeah. But not every spinner is as good as no. Nathan Lyon, so... No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but obviously Glenn Phillips did... Yeah, you know, that was that was fantastic to watch. Yeah, I mean, it was, and, it was good viewing. And how good, like, just like an example of a guy who, who was just so willing to pick up a skill set. Yeah, go out and do it. And now he's taking test match wickets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, works hard. 
Um, yeah. Well, the, the, the fact that he goes from you know being a keeper to a bowler that doesn't happen by anything other than like a shitload of hard work. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great reward, isn't it? That you know to think, oh, okay, well, so I wonder what age he he actually well, it must have been four or five years ago that he probably thought, oh, I'm not going to keep, I'm going to. Yeah, and that is quite a brave move to go. Oh, I'm going to actually practice my bowling and probably give up some time hitting balls and uh, you know move away from. There's always going to be a keeper role in New Zealand, and yeah, you know, to to take off the way he has and do it in red ball cricket now is it's yeah. Yeah, it shows that if you've got the balls to change something and you just think oh, I'm going to give it a crack, if you've if you've got the ability to give it a crack and then put hard work into it, yeah, uh, you, know, you can change the course of your career because. He probably hasn't hasn't got a test spot sometimes, but if he was still keeping, so no, you know, he's got himself into that seven bowling option. Now, now he just won't drop him. Like no, he's he's set in that test stand. Yeah, and I mean same with like Michael Bracewell as well. Yeah, keeper to all rounder as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I think you'll probably see a lot more guys doing that, either trying to pick up the gloves on the side or yeah, or yeah, roll some. Yeah, well, I heard I heard. Um, Kalan talking about his left arm offense, yeah. and I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> but I mean, they're apparently coming out well. So I'm so intrigued oh, because yeah, yeah. he said it doesn't even feel natural. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, at least Philip stayed with his, his dominant hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Kay's just watched Theo and gone. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> That's it. That would be seriously impressive. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he said he does nothing left-handed. Like. Ah. So if he ah. can go from batting right hand to doing nothing left and yeah. can bowl left arm tweakers, yeah. Yeah. that would be seriously impressive. I'm not sure that um, he'll be getting many overs yet. <laughs> no. uh, but, you know, I mean, maybe you know, Gus is the captain, so it depends how nice he can be to him. I mean, yeah, why not? Why, yeah. why not roll the, the arm over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, were you, that game against the East Park game, were you batting when Nath was bowling to Hamper? Yeah. That would have been awesome. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I wasn't playing that game, but that was I was looking forward to that moment. Yeah. I think the first ball was down the side, and Hamper was going, come on, mate, <laughs> fucking bowl it on the off side, would you? <laughs> Nath's just ignoring him. Yeah. And then Hamper's calling out for bowling about 110k. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice. Oh, Hamper is just... He, he, there's just no way you can get into battle with him. No. Oh yeah, man. He, yeah, it, I remember him walking at Hazel and doing the same thing to Hazel. They're just you know telling him that he's bowling powder puffs and and everyone was saying you just you know like everyone saying to Hazel, do not do not buy into it. Like, he just <laughs> wants you to have a go at him. He you know he's as tough as they come and uh, yeah. Ever since Buddy leaving school with Hampo, he's he was always like that. Just loves the battle. Um, oh, he's just the top bloke. Just an intense, he's, intense cricketer, eh? Yeah, man, just, he's yeah, he scored some runs and far out as he scored some tough runs. Yeah, he always does. Yeah, it's always the tough runs yeah. that he scores. There's a T20 that I I was feeling it long on. I mean, with throwing one and the Easter was coming across and Hampo wasn't looking, it just bounced onto the keeper, and I could see it lining up to actually like to hit Hampo. And I reckon I had my hands up apologising <laughs> to him before he you know spun around. To spray me, but it was a mistake. It was I'm so I'm so sorry, <laughs> Timmy. You know that <laughs> I'm not even a go at you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's man, just to play under that. Um, oh, play that tough is. I love I love watching it. Eh? Yeah, because you don't often see a batsman go at the ball. No biting, and yeah. it's just nice to see how different that that dynamic changes. Um, yeah, you know, when when a batsman's got the oh, well, no stuff you, I don't care what happens. I'm gonna have a crack at you and. See if you can, you can handle when someone's going at you, which is yeah. I don't really have the balls to do that. Oh yeah, I've never <laughs> been brave enough. Cause I'm like, I'll say something and I fucking get out next ball mm. and look like a dickhead. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've said something. I've said some things the odd time, and usually it's after I get hurt. It's just like a reaction, like oh, stuff you. <laughs> but then you quickly realise, oh no, oh, what have I done? <laughs> oh, that was yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, but Hampo just, he's like, no, I'll have a go at you. Especially against Nath. Yeah. That was always going to happen. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised he didn't actually come harder. It was a lot more friendly than I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, Nate's been um, obviously playing against him. He would bowl. He just bowled so well against me. He he would have got me out a concerning amount of times, uh, which was just awful because he would celebrate hard. And then I think there was one game must have been three, four years ago, and he got me out twice in a day. <clears throat> First one to an absolute like absolute seed. Second <laughs> ball. So away swinger, took off stump. I'm pretty sure I cut with it. And then the second innings, short wide, and I cut it to cover. <laughs> and obviously that's a tough enough that's a tough enough day for me. But then he, I don't know if it was in the Otago Daily Times, but then he he said something in the paper about how like he almost felt bad for me. <laughs> like, that is the most alpha move to just keep me out twice, just not let me move on, but put it into print. I'm like, oh, geez, he felt bad for me. Thanks, Nate. Cheers, mate. Yeah, fantastic. That's yeah, what I needed. That's tough. That's so tough. Yeah. And this last weekend's the first time I've got out twice in a day, so yeah. this is the first time going into yeah, a weekend yeah. where, oh, fuck. Yeah. I'm not bad. Ah, uh, that's the days of the openers, isn't it? That you're like, oh, bother. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, sometimes quite nice. Yeah. yeah. The, the first time it happened to me was um, against Rickard and the um, bowler Hayden Shaw. Yeah, old hockey player. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was a heck of a bowler. He took 11 in the day. Oh, Jesus. Um, I think we were 6 for 17 in the second innings. Still trading by, like, plenty. And then pissed down the next day. But, uh, yeah, I, that was the first time I got out twice in a day. And and just early as well. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, you know, that's a tough. Yeah, it was, it was a weird feeling getting into the shed. Being like, oh, fuck. Yeah. He's got out twice, but I also <laughs> can't rectify it next weekend. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, and then you just got to park up and go, okay, well, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can enjoy a couple more beers. I'm probably not. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Try and spin it that way. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah, be positive. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, oh, there's nothing, but it just sucks. Yeah. They they bowled fucking well, Tate yeah. and Latham. yeah, yeah. But really well. Yeah, they're a good, they're a good attack. I can't, I can't have Tate to say. He's a one club bowler that yeah. I've just never had any success yeah, yeah, yeah. in. So just... Yeah, no, he um, quite skillful, uh, and he's always had a really good slow ball, which in the white ball I found him. Yeah, tough to get tough away. Yeah, tough to get away. Yeah, he's yeah him and Jacko, the the bloody yeah bloody strong. Yeah, just quick enough as well that they can. Uh, that they can use the short ball. Yeah. Has Tate played any A's? I'm not sure. I think he potentially has. Oh, yeah. He must have been close anyway. He's there. Yeah. Mm. Well, he's been pretty, he's been good for them for four four years now, so. Yeah. Can whack it as well. Sorry? Can whack it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, he's played some important things against us. That's for sure. He, um, Oh, there was a couple of two days that he got 40 odd and just hung in there and you, oh, damn it. You think you're through. But you just, <laughs> you start as an only best, you start thinking about betting and then you're like, oh no, I'm here for another hour and watching you yeah. bet nicely. So, yeah, there's, um, oh, there's nothing more frustrating than that, is there? No, no. So, what's your, uh, what's your background with cricket? Like, when did you start playing? Uh, I started playing early. Um, it was just part of the Horsell Cricket Club, the junior. Oh, not Horsell. <laughs> I've had some tough run-ins with Horsell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I, I can't imagine as um, as eight and nine year olds who are probably you know, that threatening. <laughs> but but maybe we were. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I just yeah always played um, as a youngster and yeah just just loved it. Um, and then. Yeah, I can't really remember. But my first memory of cricket, I reckon, I, I, th I think back, it's at Jelly Park, and it's like the incredible, it's still an incredible. And I think of myself hitting this like on drive, and in my head, I'm full face. <laughs> but uh, I'm just uh, probably back then it was like this dirty hack, um, just happened to go straight, probably because it beat me for pace, and I was trying to pull it to the leg side, and it's yeah, beat me for pace already. But um, yeah, I remember playing, playing really early and. And then there was always um, Sam Noster at Horsell, and he was a few years older than me, but he was always the, you know, even back then he was 
everyone knew that Sam Noster was you know, a heck of a cricketer. Um, and then just kind of carried on through, uh, went, to, went to stack and carried on through that and yeah, just just loved it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's uh, oh, for me it's just a, it's a great sport and I'm glad that it's just been, continued to be a hobby for me. It's, yeah, I mean, probably a fortune for my wife, but um, <laughs> yeah, she probably wants me to, to stop playing, but at the same time, she can see how much joy it brings me, and yeah, and, um, yeah I'm yeah, just just love it. Have you been sort of playing a bit more part time this year? I think yeah, you've played you a couple of times. <clears> yeah, we? yeah. Unfortunately, this year just um, just a change of work, so it's been yeah, it's kind of hasn't worked with the schedule that much, which has been quite nice. Like, yeah. it just means I look forward to you know when I do get to play. Um, and still get to go and do the odd, you know, still get to go and train and, um, yeah, go to the pub at least once or twice a week and catch up with the boys and, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been different not being so involved with cricket this year, but at the same time it's been almost quite refreshing to, to see that there is, um, yeah. Stuff outside. Yeah, yeah, stuff outside. It's just a game and it probably gives you quite a nice perspective on, um, when, when, you know, you have weeks that, yeah, I mean, you get out twice or you, you know, you go through a month of scoring, you know, combined 10. It actually just doesn't matter as much as what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because I've been through plenty of time where you're thinking, what, like, this is just, you start questioning, like, can you do it? Um, and B, what does it mean for you as a bloke sometimes? Like, <laughs> yeah. you're, like, <laughs> you're like, is this, is this who I am as a bloke? <laughs> Disappointment. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, yeah, I've, oh, I used to yeah, you know, get out sometimes and I'd, I wouldn't necessarily get angry in a lot of ways, but I'd get quite um, self deprecate about yeah, how weak I am and um, all that sort of carry on. So, yeah, it's, it's been quite nice this year and um, oh, I just love, I love the lads. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. It's, yeah. a, it's a brilliant club. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, like I used to do the same thing. I fucking score no runs on the weekend. Yeah. And you just think about it all week. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then just have a shit week and then yeah. show up hoping to score runs and yeah. failing <laughs> and yeah. going through the cycle again. Yeah. 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 But no, it's, yeah. I think it's, um, I mean, I've always been of the opinion like if I didn't get annoyed at not scoring runs i probably would probably would have stopped because like, I'm, I'm a very competitive person and i i very much like winning and so if i and for me like my role in the team has always been scoring runs so if i'm not annoyed at myself at some level um yeah i, I think that's quite i've always been of the opinion that shows that you care and and at least yeah for your other teammates they know that you're always striving to score runs and you're not just taking any spot for granted or but at the same time if you can't drop it by thursday um, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not flash no. <laughs> probably, yeah I, I like to think right now i can drop it by <clears throat> if i wake up sunday morning and i still care it's probably not a good thing so no um, yeah yeah like, I, like the first time of season i was actively like angry mm. like I, I probably blow up at myself for a a minute in the shed, yep. but then I was done with it. But just had to get had to get it out, yeah, yeah, out yeah, the yeah. system. Oh, got them through. So I could draw it. Um, yeah. So is this like your first season that hasn't been like full time? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, pretty much out of school. I reckon I would have yeah, just would have hardly missed any weekends um, all the way through. Yeah, it's just um, the way it kind of panned out and. I mean, it's just, yeah, I, I think when you commit to a, when you commit to a team as well, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, you still want to take your time off and, and enjoy that, but I've always been of the opinion, like if I commit to a, to a team, well then, yeah, the, the reason I'm doing that is to, is to play. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's probably why this year that, oh, I think. I still feel sometimes a little bit, um, almost a little bit guilty that, uh, you know, I haven't been able to commit and, you know, and 
there was always a question like, you know, if someone is fully committing, like, you know, what's my role in, in park this year? But, um, I mean, been, yeah, luckily Scotty and Gus keep picking me, so, um, <laughs> you know, but I'm available. And so that, I feel like for them, I, I definitely go, you know, I go in thinking, oh, well, I've got to bloody score runs here, because if I don't do that, then I'm t- a, taking someone else's spot who's committing the full time. Um, <clears throat> and also, you know, I'll be, Probably leading down myself a little bit, so but I do put a wee bit of pressure on myself. Right. Um, but but I think it, it's also now become the level of perspective that if I don't score runs, I, I it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, Much yeah. healthier balance, so. though. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I've always <laughs> been the same. Like cricket's just always been like my number one commitment. Like yeah. that just comes before everything else. Yeah. So I'm very much the same. Like I can't remember. Missing a game of cricket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't know what I'd miss a game of cricket for. I feel yeah. like even if it was like my brother's wedding, I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. show up later on. Yeah. yeah. I, missed, uh, I missed a game for my sister's wedding. And I, yeah, she got lucky with that. <laughs> yeah, she's probably lucky it wasn't like a big game. Um, or it wasn't a semi final or a final because, yeah, I'd say I'd have to apologise to her for that. And uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, she should not apologise. Her fault. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know so, I play cricket yeah, exactly. on Saturday. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I always, always feel like you're, yeah, with any team sport, if you commit, you, know, you make a commitment to a group of blokes and you kind of owe it to them to at least be available as you can. And if, if it is a wedding, or obviously go and enjoy, you know, enjoy that. But um, I've always thought for myself as you know, give up the festivals, give up you know, those like cool events on that because well I've made a commitment to, to this group of fellas and I enjoy and I really do enjoy turning up, you know, you turn up early, yeah. um, yeah, you know, play your always city warrant games, get stuck in and then enjoy a beer afterwards and I mean I, I enjoy that over any festival any day of the week. Yeah, and I, I, I admire that because I, I I feel like that's not like guys on the club scene don't typically have that commitment. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what percentage of game. I feel like most of the guys are playing ninety percent, yeah, as opposed to a hundred percent. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I guess it's just. Well, and it is tough because it is a long. It's just such a long game. Yeah. Um, and and probably for me that I've always been lucky enough that you know I've always opened the batting, so I've always guaranteed a bat. Um. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I'm not, it's not like I'm giving up that much where, I, you know, people who might bet a little bit down the order and, and potentially, you know, they're giving up a lot more. So, um, you know, I, you know, I still remember that, that for them it isn't as important, um, which is fine. And, yeah, but, but just for me personally, it's always been the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is it a change of career that's, yeah. Um, I think I was speaking to Dan fan earlier you said you just became a cop yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it is, yeah yeah it's great fun oh, yeah love it you get out there talking to people um you don't know what's going to come again it's that um that real team culture with your group and um a lot of banter um yeah and, and just yeah you're just reacting to things again it's uh yeah it's, it's good fun and, and and for me it's been pretty rewarding and yeah. Um, yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Been back in Christchurch since October, oh, yeah. so not that long. And was that after what six months and what? Yeah, uh, like four, four months. Four, four months. months yeah. yeah, yeah. Four months um, training and and then into it, which has been has been just yeah fantastic. I feel like I I go to work really looking forward to it. Oh, nice. Um, and and that then makes it easier with the cricket. I mean, it's a pretty good perspective for you. Uh, talking to people, um, you know, in the job and and they talk about handling pressure. Um, and we talk about it in a sports thing where you have to handle pressure. Um, but then some of the people that have, you know, dealt with stuff and it puts the, the performance pressure in perspective pretty quickly. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't care about batting a day after where you know, some of the people with the police have, um, you know, they've had to make decisions under pressure that's, that's going to, yeah. Life and death. Yeah. 
yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've found it really interesting talking to those people and um, getting their ideas and um, and and it is a lot of the a lot of the similar stuff that we do with sport, but for me it's just to a, a higher pressure. Um, so when you're talking about yeah you know, mindfulness or manage to drop your heart rate to be able to make good good decisions under pressure, it's just done in a way that the decisions matter slightly more. But the idea of okay dropping your heart rate, yeah, you know, having a clear mind, that's exactly the same. But you're just probably doing it under you know, in the back of your mind, you know it matters a little bit more <laughs> than yeah, you know, playing a wafty cover drive yeah. or something like that. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been um uh, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I'm just trying to learn so fast and um yeah, there's been some pretty good yeah, I've been pretty lucky with the people that I've been with um in there and they've been fantastic teachers, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always wanted to be a cop and yeah. what was it probably ten years ago when I was twenty two. Mm. I passed like the physical yeah. and the yeah. the, the, the um, intelligence test yeah, whatever yeah. they do. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, you can go do the thing. But then they did like a colorblind test. Like the last oh, thing they did yeah, was like yeah. a colorblind test. <laughs> Fail it. I'm like, oh, fuck, oh. you could have done that at the start. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh. Oh, bugger. Yeah, do they yeah. still do colorblind testing? Yeah, I, I th- oh, no, I assume so. I can't. Um, it took ages for me to, to get in. Um, just for Christchurch being such a popular place. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it was a long process to get in, but I'm glad I stuck it out. Oh, um, well, yeah, but, like when I was doing it, it was quick eh? like mm. they were just trying to get cops yeah. in real yeah, yeah. quick and i remember even after i finished the physical testing they were like if anyone wants to go to south Auckland, you can start mm. work next week like without training i was like Fuck. <laughs> nah yeah, yeah no thank you <laughs> nah. no thank you oh, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely would rather get some uh, some training <laughs> but yeah it's um oh I, I think yeah i think there's a lot of things that attracted me to the police's the same reason that I've, I've stuck at cricket and that's that you know being around mates working towards a common goal and and um I, I think you need some level of competitiveness in there because you're dealing with conflict um and you certainly can't shy away from conflict in in sport or you know in life i think so um, yeah, dealing with that and it yeah, just got drawn in and yeah, loved it ever since. That's awesome. How was the training sort of things? Yeah, tough. Um, oh, it was tough being away from my wife and, um, you yeah, know, but you're just so busy that, I mean, it was, for me, you just, you head down. Um, I was really lucky that I had a great, yeah, yeah stuck in, we were the barrack of six year and we just ended up being great mates. Uh, it was just, yeah, fantastic. Everyone, it was a little bit older. There were five of us over over thirty, and one a little bit younger. Um, but it was yeah, it was just an awesome time. So how does it work? Are you on site for four months? Yeah, like you just don't camp for four months. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to learn all the skills. Well, I say learn some of the skills that are going to keep you safe, and um, and then a lot of the the procedural stuff, so you can make good decisions and. And then, for me, what I found is, is again, being able to drop, you know, you get your anxiety levels pretty high sometimes because you know, it's, it's all happening and the decisions are relatively simple, but you just got to give yourself time. If you're rushing to to get an outcome fast, that's when, I mean, I mean I've made already, if you, know, you might just make mistakes and you look back at it and go, well, this is what I'll do next time. And most of it is around slow down. Cause you got you got time you can slow down and then you can you know the answer will be you know a relatively simple one and if you if you can do that at a nice empathetic and and just talk to talk to people a lot of uh, yeah a lot, a lot of the stuff happens i think we're both people end up being pretty happy and walk away and hopefully for the people that we're dealing with they you know, that they they respect us and yeah, and then we certainly respect them as well. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's just been, yeah, it's been fantastic. I keep saying it enough. But yeah, no, that's yeah. A, yeah, and I think like that skill set transfers to a lot of things, right? Like slowing down. Yeah. Like if, if there's pressure or tensions yep. and, and just, because I imagine like a lot of the conflicts you deal with, like it's just like 
emotionally heated, right? Yeah. And people just need to yeah. to slow down, take a breath and Yeah. Yeah. And also understanding that it's you know, for if you walk into a place, um you know that they're gonna it's yeah, you know, it's their life. And so like it's really gonna matter. And so whatever they say to you, like it just doesn't like I'm, I shouldn't be that emotional around it, and I can just handle what you know. I, I should be able to help them, um, you know. And, and if if you allow yourself to, uh, I guess, you know, get that red mist or the, you know, you, you got to make situations a lot worse. And uh, so that's what I'm trying to keep reminding myself that, you know, keep my heart rate low. You're dealing with people who are quite often going through one of the worst parts of their life, and it could just be a really short, you know, sharp, tough time for them. Um, you know, so if I can't respect that, then yeah, you know, what are you really doing? Um, yeah, you're not you're not the person for the job, really. So yeah, no. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it certainly certainly put a lot of yeah a lot of perspective, but also I found it really, really you know, nice and rewarding and. Um, yeah, it, it's very different to, to a lot of the crew stuff, but at the same time, I, I think, yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that you go through with sport, um, it gives you a few tools, but you have to be able to reflect on what those tools were to, to know that you can use them and, um, and trust yourself that you can, you know, you can make good decisions if you, if you do, do simple stuff, drop your heart rate, uh, bring yourself to the present, whatever that might be. But if, yeah, you, you'll make good decisions if that happens. So. Yeah, and I mean, it, it must be like so much more rewarding than like your typical job, right? Like when you're going into difficult situations, you deal with it, you help these people like um, get through these these tough moments. Like Yeah, yeah. But before um, joining the police, I worked um, at Eddington Dakota in the school, primary school there. And that was, uh, again, that was awesome. It was such a rewarding job. There was... Um, you know, working with kids that have ADHD or, um, or autism and you certainly, you know, you, you learn a lot of the skills of how to communicate with people and, um, you know, and, and I guess being a, hopefully a bit of a role model for them and, um, you know, and yeah, you just look back on them and you go, especially some of the, some of the kids that you work with and and you know you, you look at their childhood and it's a lot tougher than what I had um, and that just that's just might be because you know the, especially with ADHD and there's a lot happening for them and they're, you know, if they're at school they're not you know if, well, if I'm at school I'm not listening to every car coming past and on the on the motorway I can block that out and I can't hear the kid behind me that's chatting away but for a lot of them they're hearing all of it and so if you're getting that huge overload of um, stimulus, like of course you're going to be anxious and heightened and, and all that. So yeah, being able to just see that, uh, and, and then it kind of gives you that, okay, well, you know, if, if, we can, if we can help cut out a little bit of that stimulus, well, what amazing um, you know, kids they can be. And, and quite often they're, such high energy that when you play sport with them, I'm cooked. <laughs> they can go a lot longer than I could. Um, you know, and, and yeah, I found that that stuff again just awesome. It was yeah, amazing to work with those sort of kids. That's that's awesome. So like you obviously you've always wanted to help people by the sounds of it. Like whether it's through police, that job, coaching, is that something that's always driven you? Is like helping? Yeah. I, th I think a lot of people want to help um, people, and yeah, uh, well, I don't mean, know. Yeah, I, you just you do what you're passionate in, and and I'm not always sure if it's uh, yeah. I like to think that I'm a decent person, and you want to help people, but at the same time, yeah, um, yeah. For me, at the moment, is I I look forward to going to work each day, and and I look forward to going to the school as well, and. I always look forward to going to coaching, so it's just me having a bit of fun, and yeah. and hopefully the byproduct is they're helping people. But um, yeah, I've always been a little bit, uh, 
I, I don't want it to sound sometimes like cocky, like, oh yeah, I really want to go help people because at the, at the same time, I'm having a great time. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's not me being entirely selfless. It's because I, you know, I really get a kick out of it and I'm having so much fun that, you know, hopefully it is helping people, but um, yeah, it's... Well, I mean, there's just so much value in that, you know, like in, yeah. in the fact that you get something out of it as well was yeah. just so beneficial. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I mean, it, yeah, it must, it's, it must just be like a character trait, like you helping people and you're obviously like a nice guy, like in the cricketing scene, you always hear like people talking shit about people, but like whenever I've heard your name come up, everyone's just like a, a good bloke. Like oh, that's, you, yeah, you that's just don't, kind, I've yeah. never heard like negative words or anything like that. Yeah. So obviously like helping people and just being a, a good person, like it goes a long way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think especially in um, in Christchurch, yeah, it's such a small place so that um, yeah, you. I mean, who doesn't want to be liked? Oh, it's well, like you know, like you you want to be liked, um, yeah. and if you can, if you're not being asshole. It's a good start. Yeah. Um, but but also with that's the thing that I've I've really you know, I think after school I've really enjoyed the cricket because you can with I guess with adults. You can be competitive, um, you, know, you can always get into a bit of a fight, but if you're a decent person, you know, almost the minute that there's a win or a loss, um, whether that be once you've once the person's got out, you know, or once any battle's been done, if you could just be a decent person, then you know, all that kind of gets washed away, and and you almost go, oh, that was that was good fun. Yeah. Um, where, I mean, some of the, you know, the difference at school is that everyone, you take it a bit more personally because you don't know everyone from each other's school where once you leave, once you leave, like no one's playing because, oh, well, I need to play a sport through school. It's, well, if I'm going to give up eight hours, I might as well enjoy myself. And um, everyone, everyone that plays cricket after school chooses to give up 10 hours of their day. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe there's so many people playing. I know. It's, it's <laughs> mad, like even like coaching like the younger Shirley boys and like, how have you got into cricket at this age? Yeah. Like yeah, especially yeah. today with like all the technology out yeah. there, like how have you ended up playing yeah, cricket? Yeah. yeah. But I mean I the the two games I always look forward to the most, um, especially in the first five, six years after school was playing against East Shirley and playing against Saints. Because that like the East Shirley Park game was just awesome. Like it was heated. Um, I don't know if you've heard of you, any stories about like little bits and pieces. It was, it was awesome, um, and just yeah. It, it, I think that it goes back to like it could happen on the field, um, but I remember also having some absolutely great nights at Burwood. Uh, yeah, in the change room and and guys like the Johnsons that um, just. They're so competitive on the field, but then you, you get stuck in afterwards and it's just so much fun and you can never laugh about what's happened. And then, yeah, for me, a lot of those awesome memories have come because it's been so heated that you're going to remember them. Um, both teams can have a laugh afterwards and you move on, but you, you've created this like, oh, that was, how good was that? Yeah, and I think that's where some of those stories come back of like, oh, back, you know, 10 years ago when you start talking like that. Well, that's because it was, a, it was good fun. Um, but you don't. I don't remember many games that, you know, ten years ago there was no tension, because the tension if you win or lose in that you remember it because it, it's either feels a little bit better or a little bit worse and, um, yeah. So I, I always look forward to the, yeah, the East Shirley games and and the the Saints games as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like when you can have it that competitive, but then also have a beer with them afterwards, like. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes it right. Like yeah, yeah. I think I've always struggled to get a bit competitive on the field because yeah. I'm like, oh, are we gonna have a beer with the market, or am I just gonna yeah. look like a fuckwit at the end of the day? <laughs> yeah. And then and then yeah, not chat to them. Yeah. But uh, that's why this podcast is brilliant because like there's always like misconceptions about like guys because a lot of guys only see guys yeah. as they're on on field yeah, presence, yeah. Yeah. but don't actually experience them yeah. off the park, which. Yeah. It's hugely different. Like Hampo is always super competitive. Yeah. But then he's always chatting to the, the boys off the field. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. And, and the um, I always have respect for people that just go, uh, you know, I'll, if I'm having any chat with a batsman, I'll always try to have a 
I'm most likely to have a go at someone or just like try to niggle someone who I think can actually win the game. Like I, I don't want to do it, um, you know, in a way that, I mean, hopefully not when people take too much offence, but um, yeah, I mean, in the, yeah, in the final against Burnside, I'm sure probably the Burnside guys came off going far out, like, I was just saying some rubbish. Like, it was <laughs> absolutely, like, you talk about batsman's technique, that just isn't happening. Like, but the hope that if I'm saying it, they might think it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, or, you yeah, know, just, just stuff like that. And that's why, you know, have a lot of respect for when people, you know, I've given it my all. You know, I've tried to contribute to win a game, you know, in a way that, well, okay, I'm, I'm batting, so that's my role. But then in the field, if it's, I've always got to do something to try to win. And if that's me trying to niggle someone, um, then that's my role. But then you see, you know, you have a lot of respect for someone like Scott Janet, who then goes and scores 80 odd, and he's literally beaten the best that I've got at that time. And you're like, well done, <laughs> like well done. That was, you know, like I haven't, I haven't given less than what I could give. Um, and then you just see, yeah, it's impressive to watch someone like that that can handle it when. And people are, well, when you've got 11 people giving it everything they've got, whether it be just the bowler, but you've also got, you know, the 10 other fielders that are giving everything they can, which might be creating presence. Some people might be saying a word, but if you can then as batsman overcome that, I've like, got a lot of respect for people that can handle those moments. Yeah, and Scott Janet's been churning the runs out. Yeah, we watched about 280 runs in eight days Yeah, of him, so... Yeah, he scored a hundred against us on the yeah, weekend. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, I think, I mean, like, to, to do a little bit of coaching as well with him. Um, but he just watching him and how quickly he learns, and I think his, um, if you watch him in the field, there's a lot of people that, um, I think are just out and out outstanding fielders, but he. He's obviously got a brilliant set of hands, but his anticipation, he understands a little bit faster what's happening in the game of cricket. Um, and I think that that's a skill that's pretty hard to learn and, and is done through a lot of hard, hard work. And um, he's obviously, oh, he's just obviously a heck of a player. Mm -hmm. How old is he? He's been 20, 21. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus. I know. Nice I see good at that I know, age. far out. I was struggling to head off the block at 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, it's, yeah, so he's done it twice against us in finals. Yeah, it's no good. Nah. Um, so you've coached a bit of Canterbury, eh? Yep. How many yeah, seasons yeah. that? Uh, I just I only just did one, a little, uh, little bit of... Maybe two. Um, yeah, got into... It's a bit of the coaching, and, and again, that was just probably, uh, yeah, watching, so, like, watching some of those players that you're like far out, very good for being <laughs> quite young, um, and and I guess for me as a coach, it was, um, yeah. I think coaching should be quite simple. Like you're, you're trying to make someone better, but you know, they're already really good players. So quite often it's about encouraging, making sure that it's not actually the, the technical side that much. Um, the technical side matters because you know, for injury prevention or um, you know, for, for bowlers, you have to be technically minded a little bit because yeah, and it's been shown that if you've got actions that can be a bit funky, well, you don't want young kids breaking down when they hit 18 because their, their back can't take it. Or, um, you know, if you, you have to be technically minded a little bit because for batting that if a person is always getting out the same way, well, there still is something to always work on technically. But at the same time, it should be the, the coach's role to present options. If you, can, if you can present three options and then with the player work out the best one for them, that's your role as a coach. Uh, instead of being, this is my idea. Well, yeah, you should be able to, 
you know, you should be able to present three, three or four more options, and, and that's done by just watching players usually. If you watch players and uh, pick up different cues, you, know, you can always talk about for Canterbury what what Latham does compared to if you watch enough cricket of what Williamson does, what Root does, what you know, any of those players do. And if you can pick up little bit of things and then you present that to an athlete, and then you can work with them to, to experiment. Um, and it shouldn't always be, okay, well, I'm gonna try what Williamson does, and then it, it works, and then you go, okay, perfect, we'll stop there. It should be actually, well, that's awesome, remember that, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep trying different things, um, because, yeah, hopefully you can almost inspire them to make their own decisions. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean that, that's the ideal role, right? It's like getting the athletes to think problem solve for themselves mm. and you were just almost like a reflective just bouncing ideas off yeah. with them right yeah um yep. yeah so you did that for about a year um how did you find like the structure of like the a a sort of things yeah i, I think it's um oh you'd, you'd obviously always like more um i'm sure all the players and all the coaches would like more is yeah because more opportunity more money um, yeah, it, it would always help, but at the same time, you know, we've got Hagley, um, and that's, you know, the minute you have something like Hagley, you're already ahead of a lot of other places, so um, I think a massive thing is, yeah, you kind of appreciate what you got, but at the same time, if, you know, if you can be a player that can only get, you know, I think, I always, Sometimes you don't look forward to playing only three or four or three days a year, but at the same time, if you can be a player that you know, gets that anxiety up about, oh, this could be my one chance for a month, if you can perform there, well, at least it's going to help when you hopefully play first class cricket. That you, know, you can look at it both ways. You can look at it and go, oh, I'm not playing enough and I'm not getting enough exposure, or that it is what it is. Um, and so I think the players that can just take it for what it is and go, okay, well, it's, it's the chance for me to face better bowling on better wickets. Um, you know, and it, it should be a bit of anxiety because it matters and it only gets worse. You know, yeah. When, when you hit first class cricket, is, it's, uh, I mean, I found it unbelievably hard. I always thought it was, it was, yeah. I found first class cricket um, yeah, it just, I found it really hard work. I was exhausted after every day. You're just so mentally switched on. Um, probably your bet with, for me, was your, your bet with a bit of anxiety in club cricket because, you, A, you want to score runs, and the, the, sometimes you're making decisions on, you know, okay, well, I want to get the game situation right, or well, it's a bit nervy, so I'm feeling a wee bit anxious, but then the one thing that then kicked up in the first class cricket is that I was batting with fear of getting hit. <laughs> and you just, that to me was like, oh, this is new. I now need to practice batting when I'm yeah, a little bit shit scared. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it's good. <laughs> was that something you, you overcame? Because you, you played a handful of first class games, right? You Yeah, yeah. Got, got one first class ton? Yeah. Who was that against? Targa, Targa. yeah, and that, that was um, oh, that's always going to mean a wee bit to me because I felt like I was always working really hard, um, and it was actually quite funny. So that that game, it was down in Dunedin. Um, I was having been with Chad. He would never take first ball. It's soft, <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Um, so I took first ball, and my wife was down there, but I think she'd been to a concert the night before, and so she was going to come along, and it was a wee bit gloomy, and anyway, I've nicked off first ball, first ball again. <laughs> so I've gone back into the change room at like ten thirty two, <clears throat> message Cornelia just going, "Don't bother coming down," and she's replied going, uh, "Is it a rain delay?" <laughs> No, oh, I'm just useless. <laughs> I'm up there. I'll park up. Oh, this is my day. Um, and and so that was yeah, that was a funny one. Our first ball of the game, we then trailed on first innings by about 
I think we maybe trialled about 40 or 50. Um, and obviously you've got some pretty big nerves going out to bat again. Um, and we're in a little bit of, I think we're in a little bit of trouble. Might have been four down and leading by 30. And then batting with Jeff Case and we put on 180 and that it was, it was good fun. Now you look back at that and you go, you know, because the, I find that the difference with first class is that teams don't give up, like they just keep coming. And if if they're not trying to nick you off, then they're trying to hit you on the boards. And if they're not trying to hit you on the boards, they're trying to hit you on the head, and then they're going to spin, and then they go back to hitting you in the head, and then back to nicking you off, and they just rattle through plans. And you have to, I guess, identify what the plan is, and then just not make a mistake. Um, and trust yourself that you can do it for six hours. So, yeah, it was um, it was a nice relief and yeah, got there and uh, it was it was batting with Andrew Ellis, uh, and he, I'd say he was one of my bigger, um, probably one of my biggest helps with cricket going up through the A stuff. He was just awesome, um, yeah, you know, mentally fantastic. He would give me always, you know, stuff beating in the park. It was the most amount of fun because he would always take a bit of the heat. Um, and I just remember scoring it. Obviously, I was fairly excited, but I just turned around. I can remember him having both arms up, like just going, <laughs> "Come here, Dave, come here!" <laughs> and uh, that was yeah. Just seeing how happy that he was, I was like, oh, "That's yeah, it was pretty cool." Yeah, that's pretty um, good. And then, and then in that game, I also got hit. Bloody in the uh, under the jaw from Nisham, and for that one I blame Kenny because there was a Kenny scored 140 odd against Wellington, and he came off and told myself and Leo that batting the new ball was the easiest job in the world because he was on 100 <laughs> and it was a second new one, and he got to the guns and then he got to 79 overs last ball of the old ball for the new one and I had this thought of Kenny saying that I was going, oh, I can't wait on one ball away. Bump it, bang, straight under got me in the um yeah, got me in the throat. <laughs> and yeah. So I retired hurt. It was bloody soft. But um yeah, it was and and then yeah, winning that four day as well was it was awesome. It was just nice to you know, I, I think runs are great fun, but it was winning winning the game singing the team song you like and, and just everyone getting around you and you know that you've done something to win that um yeah it just yeah, it matters uh, so it was yeah it was good fun that's mine yeah, yeah that's epic um and did you always come up through the canterbury system like <laughs> 17s 19s uh, yeah i i wasn't a great school player like adult really i was and that probably helped that i came out of school and i would know i just was a handy player and uh, probably a real cricket nuffy, so um, I think it was the Canterbury under 18s out of Lincoln, so flat wickets, and I left three balls on the stumps that whole week. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I just, it was like, what are you doing? Play a shot. I think, that, yeah, oh, there'll be a lot of boys that probably remember that. Will Williams, he came on his night watch when he then got 80 on the flattest wicket at Lincoln 3, and I just shot at arms twice in a three day. Yeah, um, yeah, and then probably probably the three years after school, I think, were, uh, I went through a wee bit, which was, just went through a lot that kind of, I think, spat me out as a, probably a tougher person um, with a lot more skills to be able to handle stuff. So went to, went over to the UK a year after school and... Um, that was with a guy, Troy Scanlon, who's Buller. Buller, yeah, yeah. fantastic player. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he went to the same club, and I was just playing the second team, and uh, that was that was so much fun. And I could just look back on that going, the cr- like cricket didn't matter. You, you still make some great mates, awesome memories. Um, you have to grow up because you're away from home, and you know, fend for yourself a little bit. <clears throat> um, it was just awesome. I like, I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, you know, first year out of school and. And gonna do that. That was yeah. That was a club academy, and what what a great six months that was. And um, and then came back, um, and they had that um, Canterbury under twenty side. You, you hear about how they used to have the Canterbury under twenties? So they used to have the 
under 20s and the country plan, the one day comp. And that under 20 side, the year before, that was the first time they'd done it. And they thought, oh, well, we'll just put like someone like a Craig Millen or in the play just to make them a stronger side. Well, they didn't need that because they ended up winning the comp. I think they went through unbeaten. Jesus. Latham Nichols, <laughs> Matt Henry, Logan, um, Ben Rain was over, and like TJ. It was, it was a strong. good. It was a strong. <laughs> and you look now and you go, well, of course they did, you know, fantastically well. Um, Matt McEwen was another one. Um, and then so the next year, I was in next all those boys got a bit older. And um, and I, I just I think that was awesome because it meant that when you're playing against men that had a little you know like if I was playing against nineteen year olds now you're probably gonna go get a little bit harder, you're gonna get stuck in but the nice thing about it was that since we're all such a good group of mates we probably went oh you know stuff you and we'll we'll lift and get used to playing that sort of. Um, Oh, we're just getting used to copping a little bit um, and I think that was that's always done a little bit easier with when you're with a, you know, a group of mates you can get stuck in together and, and we ended up losing the final to Saints uh, but again that was like that's pretty strong and, and I remember having a relatively good under 20 um, comp and then yeah and then just slowly kind of moving into the into the A stuff and um, uh, one, one, this was one thing, and uh, quite a few. Oh, there's yeah, a few people that know, but um, went through like a, a reasonable amount of anxiety and got to the point played against Saints, um, and ended up having a panic attack on the field facing Michael Davidson, the uh, other the left arm quick. Yeah, and I ended up having just like just fell aside. On the on the field and ended up just having to effectively retire her because I just sure. couldn't I couldn't get up. Um, luckily, like you know, everyone was bloody understanding, but it was yeah, it was like a certainly a shock where you're, yeah, very much out of control. Um, and yeah, you, know, you look back on that and you know, you know, at the time you're embarrassed because you know what the hell's happened, like you know and. Um, and, and you're trying to get over those sort of emotions, but at the same time, it, it kind of forced me into what well, I've had this, you know, reasonably, well, you say, I say embarrassing, obviously it isn't embarrassing, you know, but um, you, you certainly feel there's a bit of pressure on you. And it forced me to, I guess, overcome it. Um, and then through that, you, I, I think I actually put some time into how you're gonna manage it. Um, and and for me it was I, i've always struggled with the breathing you know I, you, you, you take your slow breaths i just couldn't get the hang of it like i just yeah it just i would find it really hard so for me it was always um a touch so it's got like a um if i can if i could practice like um yeah, if I, yeah touching the table then actually feeling what what's happening right now um, and so I've got this keychain in the car because it was always in the car that you you know you let your mind wander away and you know I guess you, know, you look back and you go well what, what was everyone else thinking it actually doesn't matter um, but you know I've been able to focus on that to bring me back and and then you know be able to carry on I thought it was just yeah I, I'm glad I'm glad that happened now because um, it's given I think it gave me a lot of skills. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> lots and stuff, clients talking about that, it's just like being in the moment, being present. Yeah. Um, so when you had that like panic attack on the yeah. field, do you know what like triggered that? Was it... I, I actually can't... I would, like there was no... Uh, there was no... Nothing verbal going on. It was just the game. And I... Yeah, then all of a sudden I was like... So it was like you built built it up in your yeah, head and yeah, it just yeah. sort of... And then all of a sudden I was like, just collapsed on the ground. Yeah. Um, you know, and... Um, yeah, it, you look back, you think back and you're like, what on earth? Like, you know, just stay up and you know, keep batting. Um, but 
you're just not in control. Like I've, had, I've had like one panic attack yeah. and that was like during like a work training thing where yeah. this guy trained me, he was like almost like acting. Yeah. Um, and like it just got it got too much for me. I was like, I, yeah. I need to get the fuck out of this room. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Start sweating, yeah. heart rate's increasing. Like, yeah. like I just can't be here anymore. Yeah. It's amazing that you know when you you look back and you go about that. You always hear about the fight flight, um, and yeah. And then when you, when it happens, you're like, holy shit, that actually is. <laughs> Like, you're like, I was just going to do anything to get out of that. Yeah. Um, and it's probably very hard to understand if you haven't had yeah. it yourself. Yeah. You're like, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah, just yeah. keep, it's like, you just yeah. physically can't control yeah. it. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's just so many people go through it that, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any shame in it. No. Um, and, but it's also something that I, I think can actually be used for people's advantage if you, you A, take it seriously, you have good people around you. And then you put time and effort into making yourself stronger. Um, you know, it can then help with any sort of uh, part of life, really. So, yeah, and just, yeah, I mean, slowing things down again, yeah. like it comes back to that, right? Just yep. slowing everything yeah, down, absolutely, getting things under control, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, did that after that incident? Did that affect your cricket moving forward? Um, I didn't play for. I think I was kind of a little bit of the A stuff then. Potentially, I might be mixing up the years, but um, I decided I just wouldn't. Uh, I've probably had about a month off, did none of the A stuff, none of the extra training. Uh, very lucky to spend probably quite a bit of time with um, John Quinn. Have you, have you? I think Lawton mentioned him. Yeah, yeah. So I knew him through um, school. Um, he was the counsellor at Stack, but obviously just with his sport and uh, he was yeah, fantastic. Always just different options to to try to practice stuff. The big one was me for it was not giving a shit what people think. And so I mean I sort of do it now as if I go and catch up with anyone for coffee and try and maybe get your yeah, if I get there ten minutes early, I won't get my phone out, I'll just sit there by myself. Because before, you know, you start the practice going uh, people might think, oh, what's he doing? Like, is he, yeah, is is he a loner or that's going through your head? Really, no one gives a shit. Like, no, no one cares. No. Um, but it's more about you practicing being okay with just in yourself, not on your phone to try to get away from it. Just sitting and allowing thoughts to come in, and then, um, yeah, aren't I'm a big one for like answer the thoughts. So if a thought comes in, oh, what's this person thinking of me? Well, don't just try to shut that out. Just go, well, actually, what does this person think? Well, they actually don't care. <laughs> oh, that's, I feel better now because I've answered that irrational question in my head. Um, you know, and, and it goes through the cricket of like, oh, what happens if I don't score runs this week? And instead of trying to fight that thought, allow it to come in. Well, what happens if I don't score runs this week? I don't know. Probably nothing. Re realistically, nine, 90 times, yeah, 99 times out of 100, nothing happens. Um, and if it does happen, if this is the week that, um, yeah, I don't score runs and I get dropped, okay, well, what does that mean? Realistically, nothing. All right. No one's going to think of me different. Um, and if they do think of me differently because I got dropped from a team, well, do I actually care what they think anyway? And then the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah. And and they're just, yeah, I, I think it allows... They were the big ones of like allow thoughts to come in and instead of spending energy trying to fight them, because they're irrational thoughts, answer them, and then that kind of allows yourself to carry on through. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty much like a meditation practice. Yeah. To yeah, some yeah, degree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, observing your thoughts and just yeah. not letting the thought take control. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and Kalan spoke about that. Lord spoke about yeah. that. And I imagine like most high level athletes are highly skilled. And regulating their thoughts and emotions. Yeah, I think you just have to be. Um, and you have to be aware of what you need to do to handle the moment at the time. Um, another one for me, like I was facing Cougar Lion and it was quick. And again, I was thinking, like, I'm so scared here. Like, <laughs> I'm terrified. And there was no point of me 
what I love about myself is there's no point in me trying to calm myself down because I just couldn't do it. So I went the other way. I like ramped myself right up. I was like, right, this guy's going to try and hit me in the head. I'm going to try and pump it. I never did. Like, <laughs> I was still ducking and weaving, but at least it meant like I was positively going at it and that allowed me to react faster and just duck and weave instead of trying to calm myself down because I just couldn't do it. I was so nervous. Um, and again, it was that nerves of not... Um, yeah, not pressure in the game. It was just I'm I'm scared, <laughs> yeah. so I need to figure out a way of getting through this. And and for me, it was ramping myself up and you know getting into that real fight mode, just to be able to handle any punches that he was throwing. And it, and it was coming like it was coming quick. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I um when I was playing for Marlborough, Jared Inglefield was our coach, and he he spoke about that. Like I think he played Shaw back to a couple of times oh, yeah. in a couple of tour games, and he just said. You just have to go in there with like I'm going into a fight mindset, yep. like, like just so switched on, yeah, so yeah. focused, like just ready to to fight because yeah. he's coming at you. Yeah. If you're on the back foot, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's different again, isn't it? Like, imagine <laughs> facing that. You just be, ah, <laughs> yuck, yuck. That's not funny. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who um, oh who who? What sort of bowlers would get you get you kind of into that like? I'm, I'm I don't, a bit more ramped up than what I don't I'm think I've really ramped. faced too many quick bowlers. Yes. I, I'd like to. I'd like the challenge of it just to experience yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Like, I've faced it like through the bowling machine, but yeah. that's it's not the same. At least you know where it's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, to have it at 150 clicks, but not knowing where it's going. Yeah. I'd, I'd like the challenge. I hesitantly say I'd like the challenge. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's good fun a week later. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, that was good. I'll enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like, a, I mean, we've always had some like Hazardine play for Park. And he was he was so much fun to skip it to. Because he, I remember one game and it was like a howling, a howling easterly. And it might even be Norwester because it was just straight down Garrick. And we did not score enough at all. Um, I think we hadn't scored 120. Anyway, I was like, oh, well, okay, well, we, we know that they'll like target whoever's and there's, oh, there's a bit of spin there as well and so it's like okay well I know they're going to target the spinner so I'm not going to have this we, we need a ball spin hit Theo um, and but we can't bowl them into the wind really like I just felt like oh, with the new ball two men out they'll just take them down and so went out there and said okay Hazel you'll bowl that far, far end into it and he just turned around and go I might have a run off at that end. <laughs> I was like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. You're still bowling that end. <laughs> um, I guess we'll find out what happens here. But yeah, just that whole idea, he was so, he could bowl so fast. And I'd enjoy, um, you talk about those like middle of mind games. And I'll be at the, talking to him and always say like, we're just going to nick him off here. Like, you nick him off and... I think yeah, let's go full poles. Let's go real full, and I'll run past and run back to slip. And as I just pass the batsman, just might say something like, "Just trying to hit you in the head." <laughs> uh, it, just hopefully that, that might make them be like, "Oh, <laughs> sit on the back yeah, yeah, a bit exactly, more." Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We have to have me like, please pitch it up. I know you want your bumper. He's definitely going to bowl his two bumpers, but just, let's just pitch it up as much as he can. Um, yeah, he was he was so much fun, but man, he. He is quick. Like, yeah, got some. He sh shapes it a bit too. Like, when he's been playing for a target this year, like, yeah. he's hooked it a yeah. long way, yeah, like, yeah. notably more than other well, bowlers. Yeah. Yeah, which he always told us he swung it, which I'd never seen until this year. <laughs> um, yeah, he, yeah, he's looked like he's bowled in the last month, just rapid, um, which has been exciting to watch. It's, you know, you feel... Oh, with what he went through with the cancer, and um, it was pretty cool to see how how he's going so well now. Yeah, was, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, awesome. it's, it's, he's one that is you have pace, and and he's yeah you have like guys who are quick, but he's that niche. I'd say sometimes ten k up, but it's it is uh, fast, aggressive, that little bit of spray candy. Sort of behaviour as well. Um, that's, that's even worse though, because you're yeah. like, fuck. I know, yeah, yeah. Where, is it, where is it going? Oh, yeah. He's it's not sure, no, so exactly. I'm definitely not exactly. sure. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be head. I'll just have a bounces <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, 
yeah, it's certainly something different. Uh, yeah. Hopefully he'll be back one day and maybe in a few years after the cricket he's still still bowling quickly and come back to park and, <laughs> um, and I don't need to face him in the nets. I, I'd almost rather face the quick ball in a game than in the nets. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Horrible yeah, in the yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when they're overstepping by half a metre. Yeah, something. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah, exactly. And there, no one's saying that's one for the over. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah. And there's the second one. There's the third one. You know, like, that's what I fucking say that our bowlers like are getting bumped out all the time. Then I ask them to bowl a bumper on Saturday. No, I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're happy mm. fucking mm. trying to hit me in the head at training. Mm. We don't have that issue with Nath <laughs> at the yeah. moment. He certainly is uh, more than happy to bowl his bumper. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. Oh, I, I think. Um, yeah. Actually, I had another another thought. Um, just of the you kind of you carry on and it was a year after playing for Canterbury and um it was must have been a year after getting the 100 and then a little bit of disappointment not getting a contract because you obviously you want to have a contract because you yeah the money's nice and you feel like you'll be uh, rewarded and, and then the next year didn't get one but then had a year from absolute hell like you talk about not scoring a run. I think I averaged 12 for the season. Oh, no. like, just horrific. <laughs> but yeah, I, I still look back in the year and go, it was good. we won our one-day comp. Still had a great time. Um, but I remember getting a question, and I, I don't know who asked me. Uh, I don't know if it was a cricketer or if it was someone. But they said, oh, are you still going to play? And that thought had not even <laughs> gone through my head. And that's what I knew, like, oh, definitely in the, in the right place at Park, that... Even though I had had, you know, such a bad year, um, uh, that thought of oh well, will I keep playing? That never came into my head. I was like, well, that, that to me is a good sign um, that I'm still getting enough out of the game to enjoy my week without scoring, scoring runs. any runs. Yeah, like yeah. Was, yeah. If you can get through a season oh averaging twelve God, like, and man, still want to come man. back, I remember. Um, and there was there's probably a good lesson in there because I. I um, got cited at the end of it where this is the only time that I've ever reacted like really poorly and it was it was bloody poor <laughs> the last game I missed a like a, it was a good ball from Jacko going forward just to block it and just completely missed it and pulled me and I remember that frustration of like how have I got to the point where I was opening the batting for Canterbury and now this year I can't even just play a, a forward defensive like that should be the most easy. it's not like I'm getting out making mistakes I'm getting out not physically <laughs> blocking it um, and anyway we all turned around and um, clipped the clipped the stunts a little bit which obviously not flash at all and um, and quite rightly got cited um, which you know yeah you just have to you just own up and go yeah sorry like unacceptable <laughs> um, it is what it is and yeah and it, and it gets dealt with whatever whatever way it gets dealt with sort of thing but um, yeah it was a it was a funny one that you know at least then you know that you're still playing for the right reasons the fact that you are scoring no runs um, but then next year had a fantastic year because almost I wasn't trying to like all the canary stuff had stopped I decided to stop playing A's just because I was like no I'm I don't have enough energy to try to get back into the Canterbury team. Like I, I felt like I was still good enough to play A's, but I, I didn't have enough energy to get better and get back into the Canterbury side. And if you don't have the energy, then like, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so when you were in the Canterbury setup, did you have a contract for your first season? Uh, I had it for one year. Must have been 2016-17 season. Yeah, yeah, which was awesome. It was. Yeah. So then you played that season. Yeah, I and played then... the season before. So I think I, I played for Canterbury over, spread out over four years. Um, and that makes it tough, right? Like when you're not getting a consistent run. Well, yeah, I, I did get enough of a consistent run. Like I, I certainly, when I look back on it, I, yeah, I probably, um, the reason that I'm at peace with it is that I tried absolutely my best and I found it so hard and I got a I felt like I got a fear run um, and just wasn't quite good enough <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah that's where 
reasonably lucky that I did get enough of a go to know that, just I'm not quite good enough. Yeah, it's a nice um, place to be, right? Yeah, like, exactly. And, and you can just reflect on that and go, well, oh, yeah, I still can. Yeah, I've still got my Canterbury kit, you know, beside me on the bat that I scored 100 with. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to, yeah, it's nice to know that you did it once. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, yeah, I mean, to to play and, and think you got a consistent chance, but then also realise that, hey, maybe this was my peak. Yeah. That must be so nice, because like, I imagine like a lot of guys get very disjointed runs, limited opportunities, maybe think they can play, but don't really have the chance, and then don't get that self-reflective point of all that time to be like, fuck, was I good enough, or was yeah. I not good enough? Yeah, yeah, and, and I think, um, yeah, I mean, sport's just a, it's just a brutal, it's just a brutal place to be when you're trying to make it your living, and, and you see... You see people at the top who are going really well, but the amount of pressure that they're under is just unbelievable. Um, and I think, yeah, to, to be able to, yeah, be able to, to be able to do it for a long period of time takes a, a huge amount of mental fortitude. Um, but there's such a limited number of people, and I think sometimes we always look at people who've got. Uh, more of an opportunity, yeah, I think I've got more of an opportunity, but, yeah, and that's where just selection is so brutal, um, that they have to pick someone, <laughs> like, and, yeah, and especially Canterbury at the moment, I think Canterbury is like a tough place, because I think it's probably, probably one of the more talented places to be, with Hagley that's really attractive, Fultz is a brilliant coach, Donks is a brilliant coach as well, and so people, you've got a good setup. Well, I think it's a good setup with Canary, like with Hagley and everything there, but also good coaches who are attracting players that want to try to push for black caps. And so, yeah, also bringing in people, and, and because that it's not Canary Cricket's money, it's New Zealand Cricket's money, you know, you can't, you, you want players to go to the best coaching. Um, and so I think it is a tough, it's a tough place to be, yeah. um, which, yeah, you know, kind of look on it, it. It is what it is. Like, yeah, um, yeah. I, being involved a little bit in the coaching stuff last year, yeah, you see how how much care Fultz and, and Donks take in the Canterbury side, and it's yeah, reasonably tough for them because yeah, it's not like you're picking nine good players and two guys who want to give the opportunity. It's 15 guys who, well actually more than that, like you've got 16 contracted players plus guys. So you're looking at 20 people probably at Canterbury at the moment that are good enough. You get the black caps in, that's all of a sudden what, 26 players who are good enough and you've got to pick 11. Um, yeah, it's pretty... Yeah, that's, like, that's tough, eh? Yeah. And, that, and that's what surprises me when guys seem to move to Canterbury to, or they've moved, like, um, who moved, like, Rippon, Ray, Mackenzie, all came from, like, Otago, where they probably all had full-time gigs for Otago to roll the dice at, you know, like, those, they're not all going to get yeah. the full game time that they would have done nah. there. I think um, some of those players probably handle that little bit of pressure. Like, for you to play for New Zealand, you have to be able to make into any first-class side. So... For those players, potentially the the benefit of coming to a place like Canterbury is that there is a little bit of edge. Like you're not you're not guaranteed anything. Right, There's yeah. a little bit of edge to I okay. Well, I, yeah, exactly. I need to be the best. Yeah. Um, and you know, and yeah, I I guess that's a that's a question of like, do we want our best sixty six players always playing against each other, or you know, is it good to have the odd time where there's a little bit of edge and even in just selection, um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty brutal place. Um, but even yeah, even for the coaches, it's I think Canterbury's pretty lucky with the amount of coaches that we have. Um, you know, Freddie's awesome. Um, obviously, Dan, he's even like yeah, look at Dan Van and what he's doing. How how many kids he's keeping in cricket is unbelievable. Like. <laughs> It's pretty impressive. Um, 
So I, th I think, yeah, Canterbury's pretty lucky. It's just, you're always gonna have people that are unlucky, not the, but you're gonna have unlucky people yeah. to, to not get picked and, yeah. Um, yeah. And Tyler's probably one of them at the moment. He's like, he's scoring, he's going really well. So, and that's not, that's not to say that he doesn't deserve to be in. Like he just, he's going really well and, yeah, sometimes you're just going really well and, and it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a tough place to be. Yeah. Um, is, is coaching something you want to get back into in the future or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it will be. Um, yeah. I enjoy it. Was it just the police work that made you step aside? From yeah. Ace? Yeah. It's just too tough. Um, it, it wouldn't be fair on, um, any athlete to have part-time coach so uh, yeah I mean I've always enjoyed talking cricket so if people want to come and have a chat like I've from any club I've enjoyed talking cricket and giving my two cents and and what I've seen and probably like I don't talk much um I will talk about what I've seen in other players that have made them successful and and I think that's um People can just take it or leave it, and yeah, it's. Uh, I think there's a couple of Canary boys that people should be talking to 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 see how they go about it because it's impressive. Yeah. Um, what, from your experience, is there anything like you've noticed, like guys in the A system who then step up to Canary? Is there anything that they're doing differently to other boys, or is it just like? There's a certain skill cap on players, or are they working particularly hard? Or I think um, I think there's a couple of players that the ones that I, that I see potentially a work ethic, but not they don't just work hard for the sake of working hard because um, there's a lot of players that put yeah you know, shitload of time and effort into it, and which is really important, but it's the um, the ability to manage their time so it's not all about cricket um, but they've reflected really well on what they need to work on so I think the yeah, reflection is huge um, and and then giving to others so the one example which I thought was a fantastic is I was up um, the assistant coach role in Wellington, and we were playing a four-day against, yeah, obviously against Wellington at the basin, and Theo was 12th man. Um, so obviously at lunch I was going to go fling to him, and Henry Nichols just came out. He got a flinger at lunch, and he just he's like walking up, so I just do his eye off fling as well. So he'd given up his lunch, which no one would be denied. Like if he he's playing, he's already got out. Um, if he went and had his lunch, like no one's thinking about it, everyone's like, yeah, it's fine, like your plan. Um, but he went, got his flame flinger and flung the Theo for you know, half an hour and then had to, yeah, you know, obviously he could still have his lunch, but just to be able to have the mindset of, oh, okay, well, no, this is, you know, what can I do now to help someone? I'll go and fling. Um, and and oh, I think the benefit on that is, hey, oh, you've become, you know, people are going to do more for you. So if, if he wants to have a hit, you know, people are going to be more willing to throw balls to him because you felt like he's helped you. Um, but also, if you're flinging to someone, you're also picking up on cues that you might want to use in the future. So, always look at you know, the canary training. You'll always see Tommy and Toey flinging if they're not betting, which, you know, for the they're big players, um, but they're always giving giving something back um you know and i think that that's a huge part um and then that that kind of leads on to the reflection of you know how do you reflect on your cricket um and and probably this is a big one now because club games are videoed so if people were to reflect i think you know and this is what the trip that i well do you do much reflection on your betting uh, more like my thought process than yeah. technical stuff, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more. It's more like what I'm. Yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. If you were to 
watch back your batting and to to reflect what would you watch if you I, I want to get better I, I, by the moment I'm going to get better so I want to watch part of my batting what am I going to watch that's a good question I think I'm quite aware of like my strengths and weaknesses yeah but then don't work on my weaknesses like I should yeah um, yeah yeah and yeah, no, I I genuinely don't know what I would yeah. be yeah. focusing on because I think um I think a really big part of reflection is like if we're if we're reflecting on you know we should be reflecting on say our batting and it needs to be if you're reflecting on your batting you're reflecting on like the entirety of your batting you're not just reflecting on the dismissal um and and I think probably with video if you're you know the amount of people that would watch themselves getting out more than watching themselves be successful would probably I feel it would be high. Yeah. Um, where if you're watching yourself play, you know these cover drives, okay. Well then I'm reflecting on my betting and going, okay. Well I don't need to wait forty balls to play a cover drive because I'm actually quite good at it and I can apply pressure that way. So then you can you can put that into your memory bank. Okay. I can cover drive, and then you do it again, and then you're reflecting it again. And you go, okay, I've cover drives, I've, yeah, the cover driven really nicely. Um, so if you're reinforcing that five, six times, you're going to start to put in a pretty set game plan, but also one that you've got trust in that will work. Instead of, um, you know, oh, this is how, yeah, you know, I struggle for pads, so I'm going to watch my, yeah, you know, whatever your hip position might be, or yeah, you know, which does matter, but you should be picking up trends. So reflection should be done in a way that's just it is what it is, and then after a month, if there's any trends that start to pick up, good or bad, you can then take that out of it. Um, I think is a really key thing because you should watch yourself and go, "This is this is my batting at the moment," and just it is what it is. What can I pick up? What 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 am I doing really well? What am I doing in the two balls leading up to me getting out? And if it's, um, geez, I'm, I look different in those two balls than I did 10 balls ago, well then what, what am I doing different? You know, and then that can just start to bring routines and I think those players that do that really well, they're the ones who learn fast and get out of A stuff and go play first class and then get into first class and do well. And that's, yeah. Mitch yeah. Hay, Mitch Hay for me is probably the the best one. Yeah, yeah. He, you look at his development, like how fast he's got, very good, <laughs> and that just doesn't happen because he's like he's just naturally he's naturally very good, but he's gone from you know being what he he probably last year got into the side. Yeah, everyone would have thought of him as a key bat. Last year he managed to, because of just all the work he did, he got himself into the team as a batsman because he took it took an opportunity. Got last time in the batting, did it, scored ninety, gets another chance, and and that doesn't happen by accident. That he was good enough to take the chance at opening when he had it opened. You know, it was yeah, he's done something right, and I think it's that ability to learn and and work is absolutely last off because that. Yeah, yeah, he, he it's impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I mean he's probably up there in terms of not too far off from the next yeah next pick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially Blundell's struggling at the yeah. moment. And the way, just the way that someone like Mitch is getting better, yeah, you know, when he does get his chance, you wouldn't be surprised if he took it because he's he's trained at the at the level that would mean that he could perform then and there. He's not going to wait. To get to that level, to be training at that level, he's, I'd imagine he's already doing it. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's impressive watching those sort of boys. Yeah. You're thinking far out though. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how fun would cricket be if you bloody average 50? It's like golf, like, if I was playing off like a five handicap, it'd be yeah. such a fun game compared to playing off 30. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm actually going out with Nate on Friday playing some golf. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. he like with the sticks? Uh, yeah, no, he's pretty handy. Um, but you'd hope so, because he invests a lot in his <laughs> golf. Um, 
Yeah, so we have like a a little wee deal that whoever loses the game changes their name on our group chat to um, yeah. At the moment, he's he's yeah, he's my bitch, and if I lose to him, I'll be his one. So you know, it's <laughs> just a little bit on it. That, nice. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's got to have that sort of like competitive. Yeah. Who's who's, who's up, heads up between you two? I think I am currently, but I'm not going to be. I'm still not going to go and overconfident. Uh, yeah, yeah. The thing with Nate is he could probably go lower than I can, uh, but he could also go higher. Oh, you, just, you just have to get Nate's head, wouldn't you? Oh, just yeah, melt yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was making him sound like it's a long drive for uh, <laughs> comp every time. Yeah, no. He, um, yeah, so we'll do that, and that will be a bit of fun. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck, we've been going an hour and a half. Shit, that bloody flew off. I know, it does, eh? Oh, it's really? sort of like, almost yeah. getting like a trance-like stage, yeah, yeah. eh? Yeah, bloody hell, that's impressive. Yeah. 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 Anything else you want to chat about, or...? Uh, no, I, I guess, um... Oh, well, hopefully, hopefully we get to play against each other. Um, yeah, are you playing the some... last game of the season? Missing those two uh, as well. Yeah, so this week will be my last week. We've got old boys. Um, yeah, what's happening in your game? We... I think we've got about 130 for seven. We made 210. Oh, yeah. Two, yeah, I think we're about 80 ahead. Yeah. Uh, seven down. So, I mean, well, yeah. But we've had a, we've had, I think we've had a pretty good season. We're potentially going to be bridesmaids in all comps. We're we second in the T20 final, second in the one day final, and we're training Burnside at the moment. But oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're not doing you any favours. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just good fun. Like, I, you know, uh, oh, it's, it's funny when it comes to finals. Like, we have lost, I've lost, I think, six one day finals. Maybe five. I might be overselling that. I think five. Um, but. Yeah, you look back at them, they're great days to be part of, and we've lost, I lost plenty to St. Albans. They were just the... So yeah, strong. So eh? strong. Yeah. You got, um, yeah, I mean, like I, I'm, yeah, I'm bloody good mates with um, guys like Holstein Langers, uh, you know, Aaron Norman Dawson, and enjoyed playing against them the minute I finished. Uh, like... On the field, it was like, my goodness. Yeah. I met Holstein, was my first ever Premier Wicket, so I got that over him. That was a real treat. Um, so, I mean, he's got me out 10 times, but it, to me, it doesn't matter. I, it just doesn't matter. I got him out once. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, it's, I think that's the, the benefit of having the heated games because you've got something to talk to with everyone afterwards. and. You know, becoming great mates with them just through well them being so competitive um and but also just being such top likes yeah you know, it's yeah miss it's it's been funny playing saints without them it's a bit of a different makeup these days those saints but yeah yeah uh, and no and like they've got they've got so many good young players like you look at um you know Lockie harper and Ben Russell, Matthias, um, and oh, Ian Sunis has been, he's been really good for the last couple of years. And yeah, that's pretty much, if you've got some players that can perform and then you can make everyone really enjoy the cricket and then go towards a common goal, you'll be, you'll be a strong side. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't need, there's no one that's, you know, exponentially better than anyone else. Probably the strongest side at the moment is Burnside, and they've been, um, <clears throat> you know, they've been they've been such a good side. But you look at a lot of good. I don't know how what you find, but I think if a team has a couple of people that have played a lot of cricket, they've got. I guess it kind of allows people coming into men's cricket to settle in. Yeah, a little bit. Definitely does. Yeah. Like Hampo will probably take a lot of heat, but he loves it. And so if he's taking the heat and he's taking responsibility, then it's the chance for the, you know, the 18, 19, 20 year old to come in and just enjoy playing men's cricket. Yeah. Um, instead of them coming in and going, geez, I've got to try to perform <laughs> because you know, like if I don't perform, we don't win. We're, I think it's just so important, guys like you know, for Park, we, I, we always, 
all the young guys coming in. Here we go, young boy, Toby Robinson now. He's batting three. I said to him, like, it's not his role to score the runs. It's his role to come in, enjoy it. The reason he's batting three is because we think he's a bloody good player. And he's got, you know, he's... Well, you don't come out being boys high captain if you're not a really good player. But it's not his role to score the runs. It's Now it's Kalan's role, my role, Dougie's role to score the most amount of runs. And if we don't win, well, it's probably because us three didn't score enough. Not, oh, well, the 18, 19 year old didn't perform. Like, oh, yeah. I think that's a really, really important thing that if you can have those older players that take the, the performance responsibility, you're going to be a strong a strong side. Yeah. And I think giving like those younger guys like consistency as well. Yeah. Like if you've said he's batting three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like regardless of performance, like yeah. it gives him that chance just yeah. to bat and yeah, yeah, yeah. get used to everything. Absolutely. And we're starting to see like you look at um Toby who he's a for eighteen, he's a hard hitting, like he hits the ball bloody hard. But the nice thing for him that you just start to see already is that he's now Back at himself to, um, you know, strike the ball earlier in his innings. Like he's not having to, you know, oh, this is how I think I should go about it and get singles. Well, now the way you go about it is by hitting the ball hard. So go and hit the ball hard. And if it doesn't work, well, it, it wasn't meant to be like. Yeah. It's like you're to score the runs anyway. So, you know, good job. <laughs> Start to find yourself. In the three years, I'm sure he'll be scoring the pizza runs. And that's the same with Kalam when he came in. Like, um, yeah, when he came in, it wasn't his role to score the runs, it was myself, Dougie and Oscars. And he could settle into opening and yeah, he, he scored a couple of fifties pretty early on, but you look at all of a sudden, because I think he was able to keep up with the batting, and hopefully he had hopefully yeah, you, know, you always like to think that myself, Oscar and Dougie were at least helping him in some way. Um you know, now you look at him and he's like oh, yeah scoring heaps it's got a couple of hundreds this year and uh yeah real pleasure to watch yeah, yeah. hopefully he can do it against you boys <laughs> in, in two weeks time <laughs> let's hope not yeah um, but yeah no bloody good yeah no it's been awesome yeah no thanks very much for having me i really enjoyed that that was a yeah that was that's funny. nice that flew by it does eh? it just it just it goes 